Touchdown will be a PAT away from tying. Visca, the snap, fakes, runs straight ahead. He turns, he rolls, he dives to the goal line. Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! Visca Chenault cannot be denied. Touchdown Taylor with the 25 unbalanced line. Fake now the pitch off the right side. Remsburg turns a corner and he's on his way to the end zone. Mikhail Anu is there at the two-yard line. And Air Force strikes first to make it 29-23 in overtime number one on one play. Well, the Buffaloes put themselves in a hole once again, but they're able to tie it on that touchdown mm-hmm. on the Wildcat. But LaVisca Chenault, PAT, which we'll talk about that, could have been a game winner. And then the one-play drive in overtime by Air Force. Buffaloes come up empty on fourth down, and they fall. Playing in overtime for the second week in a row, Last week they went over Nebraska. This one they fall 30 to 23 to Air Force. Coach Gary Barnett, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Well, what's your postscript on this one? I guess that game didn't unfold in, in a surprising way in any way, shape, or form, did it? No, I think that's probably what we expected. Uh, you got to play all three phases, you know. And there, Buffs had a uh, just a momentary lapse on a special teams play that caused that game to to go into a different way. Uh, they fought back, got themselves in a position still to win the football game, and then the one play drive in overtime by Air Force. Uh, you know, it just sort of took the wind out of our sails. It looked as, you, you know, made, we just had two long drives. I was going to say, we you, were tired. Gary made that point uh, in a post game on radio. You said, the more you think about it, the bus fight back, two long drives, and then the deflation of giving up a one-play drive is really tough for that offense, and they have to pick it back up and go out there again. Exactly. I, I mean, I, they were exhausted. And so, uh, you know, you could, the game has so many ebbs and flows to it, right. and you, you – you just have to be consistent. And young teams and teams that aren't winning aren't consistent. And so when they learn to be consistent in every phase, then, you know, there are going to be fewer losses and more wins. Yeah, what you're talking about there is is the inconsistency mentally in a ball game like this. Colorado came out, first couple of possessions, down the field, touchdown, force a turnover, field goal, up 10 nothing, And then they go dormant again for about two and a half quarters. That kind of thing. Uh, not having the PAT uh, team out there which ends up ultimately being a block PAT, which was huge in his ball game. It, it's the mental things that a young football team's learning about. Absolutely, and you can tell them about it, but until they live through it, they don't really learn. So these are learning experiences for a young team. Yeah, Bubble is now 2-1 and one after non-conference play, opening up Pac-12 play. We'll talk more about that with the coach here in a moment. If you notice the uniform combination they had out there, black, silver, and black, we caught up with the uh, equipment staff here at CU and talked to them about coming up with that combination for this football game. Coach determines our first six combinations through the season, and then after the bye week, he and I will sit down and discuss games we have coming up there and what combinations he feels more comfortable with and the team in. And then we do, we get some feedback from some of the players as well, so we get them involved on it, but really it's just coach's decision. We have the most combinations in the Pac-12, next to Oregon, of course, but we have a great group of student workers that are in here day and night helping us put them together. Probably the helmets are the the most time consuming for us. It's a lot of work to, that goes into putting them together with face mask and the decaling and whatnot. So we changed up the decals from what they've used here in the past. This is my first year here and I brought over some ideas from where I was before at Stanford. We used a new chrome decal today, uh, the whole way around the helmet. And we're gonna do that on all of our helmets this year and, and as you can see, it really pops in the sunlight. Our first night game, keep keep an eye on it because it, it'll uh, really be standing out then as well. We put a lot of hours into it every day as equipment managers, not only myself, but everybody across the country. And for us, our gratification and our time to shine is when these guys hit the field every week and and when he looks good and, and you get a lot of compliments and people are tweeting about it that's always awesome so for us the hours are what they are but three four hours every Saturday that's kind of shows our, the work that we put into it and our ideas and creativity but that's part of the business and, and it's a great part of the business so the Buffaloes end up falling in overtime 30 to 23 we, we talked about how tough it is to get ready for this system defensively the Buffs at times look good. It's a game where they started to figure things out a little bit, though, didn't they? Well, they did after they'd seen it over and over and over and over. But, uh, you, again, you can show them film and you can try to simulate and practice, but because nobody on your team practices or blocks that way, you don't get a good look. Yeah. It's like I'm sure your mother said, Mark, don't touch that hot stove. And I'll <laughs> and I, bet you. And I touched it. I bet you touched it. And so it's the same sort of thing. But uh, it's, it's so hard to get ready for a team like this in two days because that's really all you have to do. Uh, you, you know, you can get them when you play them in a bowl game and you got six weeks, that's different. Yeah. But when you're playing them uh, coming off Nebraska, getting ready to go to uh, uh, Arizona State, and they're in between, I mean, it it's, takes you out of your rhythm and takes the entire team out of their rhythm. 
All right. The Buffs now 2-1 and one after non-conference play. Heading to Tempe next week to take on Arizona State. How are you feeling about where this team is at? You know, I, I, I think this team really is better at a better spot now than I thought they might be. Uh, given their challenges on defense, uh, I, I, w- I was concerned that they could even get to this point. But they have. Mm-hmm. And I think they're growing up. Uh, you know, Aaron Maddox's loss is going to be severe to yeah, this football team. Question. But uh, somebody else is going to have to play. I think Arizona State's going to be a situation where they're going to be a lot like us. And so it's a matter of uh, playing better football than they do down there. It's not one that we are – it's not like Air Force where you got to really be concerned about what they do. Yeah, tough injury, by the way, for the safety aromatics. He went off the field on the Air Force side, ran into one of the misters out there and had a terrible leg injury, so he was taken to the hospital. So next week, it's the Buffs and the Sun Devils in Tempe as they open up Pac-12 conference play at 2-1. and one. Coming up next to the Stampede, we're going to continue to unpack this loss to Air Force. We're back in a moment. Forty-yard line runs to the numbers in the near side. Thirty-five ball comes loose as it's poked away by Mikhail Onu, and another turnover. And Nuamatu Falo comes up with his third fumble recovery of the season. And the well, there was a big defensive play for the Colorado Buffaloes, but in the end, it ended up being a loss in overtime. So us played extra session for the second week in a row, but they fall to Air Force at Folsom Field, thirty to twenty-three. Hi, everybody. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, back here in the Stampede. Nuamatu Falo joining us. That's three fumble recoveries so far this season. You are oh. oh. <laughs> There's a football. Gary Varney is throwing a football in. You're supposed to jump on that thing. You got three fumble recoveries this season. Man, you're Johnny on the spot all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I really think it just comes to part of me playing my part of running to the ball. You know, that's a big emphasis we make on defense. And uh, you and me taking that to the heart, you know, I think it's really paying off for me. And, you know, I'm not done yet, so I hope to get at least 10 more. Yeah. You know, Coach, I know he's been talking to you guys a lot about finishing and consistency. Maybe through three weeks, and here you sit at two and one. It's certainly disappointing yeah. the Buffs lost this past Saturday, but it's been a consistency issue for you guys, hasn't it been? Yeah, it has. I mean, you know, we, we just got to really key in on, on what we got to do consistently, like you said, you know, just whatever it is, or offensively, de- defensively, just, just keep making plays consistently, you know, offense, whether it's, it's driving down, getting in the end zone, the defense, you know, getting that stop and getting off the field. When you went back and, and saw the tape with the team, does it appear to be more physical mistakes, mental mistakes? How do you see it? Uh, I see it as maybe a little bit of both, you know, okay. maybe more on the side of, of mental, you know, it, it, guys just still got to get in, in the playbook and, you know, get in the, in the meeting room and go meet with coaches, you know, just so that we can be the smartest ones out there. Yeah. You want to explain that offense that you faced this past weekend, how tough and difficult and challenging that offense is from a defensive perspective. Man, from a defensive perspective, you know, the triple option is not easy to, to defend. Um, you know, just like my coaches are saying, uh, if you get close with an option team, you know, it's going to be hard to come out with that win. And, yeah. You know, we experienced that, but um, it's good that we were able to get that in, you know, get that feeling so that we can turn the page and move on. So you think this is a great learning experience for the Buffaloes? Uh, yes, sir. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. But what do you think you came away from that learning? What's the lesson? A uh, lesson like, for me personally is, is, to be, is to be more be more than I can uh, to be out there and be more of a leader and lead those guys and, you know, make more plays on my end and just – Get our, get our guys to get off the field defensively. So the Buffaloes are 2-1 and one now, getting set for a trip to Arizona State to open up Pac-12 conference play this weekend. We all know that Ralphie is the greatest mascot, hands down, in college athletics. It was kind of cool, though, that Air Force showed up with their Falcons this past weekend. We caught up with some of the folks that handle those Falcons. It's awesome having another live mascot at the game. I grew up going to Air Force games, and so I've seen the Falcon fly tons of times. Yeah, having the Falcon in the stadium is awesome. Two live mascots in the same stadium is really cool, and it's great for the fans to see. But let all the people come up and see her and take pictures, and it's a great time. So I'm in ROTC here at CU Boulder at Debt 105. And I also have a brother that went to the Air Force Academy, so it's awesome that we can watch these teams play together in the same stadium. And being in ROTC, it's really cool seeing the Air Force come out here. Most of the teams that we play don't bring our mascot. And since it's in shape, we get to all go, so it's a pretty cool experience for the team to get to come. We haven't played CU since 1974. And I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I've never been that close to a Buffalo before. It's so definitely a unique experience for everybody who does Falcons. This is the coolest thing I do at school. I go down every day and I get to play with birds, which isn't something a lot of people can say. It's definitely the best part of my day every day. Now, the, the Falcons are cool, but it's not Ralphie. Nah, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not never at all. never gets old running behind Ralphie, even though you're a senior. Never gets old, yeah, Never it? gets old. I mean, I, I love seeing Ralphie out there, even when she comes out there for her practice runs. You know, I love yeah. being able to stand out in Dow Ward when I'm doing homework and just 
Let it, let it run. Watch it run. Okay, you're a senior. I can't believe you're a senior already. Me neither. Huh? What, what do you kind of change? I mean, you take on more responsibility, more leadership, more accountability. How do you kind of approach your senior season? Uh, just approaching it every day with the mindset and the attitude, you know, to get better and, and to get my team better, you know, to, to go out there and be, be a leader by example, just like the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. And just, you know, get our defense to be on one page and, and get our team to be one and as a family. You like this new system, though, that, that Mel has brought in? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like this system. I love this system. Yeah. You know, I think this system is exactly what it needs to be and, and where it should have been. So I got a lot of love for Coach Tucker and for the system especially. Well, you know what I love about Mel Tucker? You tell me. You play for him. He's non-negotiable, isn't he? I mean, it's no. this is what the standard is, yes, period, correct? Yeah, he, he's straight up with what he wants, and, you know, there's no sugarcoating around it. You know, uh, what he says is what he wants. You know, I think the guys are, are getting to understand that, especially going through a spring with him. And I'd have to think as a player, when you know exactly where the boundaries are, this is yeah. what's going to be, there's no gray area. You kind of respect nah, that about a coach, don't you? Exactly. I mean, because it just shows how much he cares. You know, it shows yeah. how much he, he really wants this. And, you know, for, for players to see that through a coach, you know, I think it's really exciting because then it gets your players fired up. So, I mean, we're, we're really glad to have him. All right. Now everything changes. You're going to Pac-12 conference play. Give yeah. us a thought about ASU. I mean, we're, we're going into Pac-12 play. You know, that's really our biggest focus. So, you know, going into ASU, our mentality is 1-0 throughout the whole week and just come out here every day and, and do what we need to do. All right. I love this guy. Good luck this season. Yes, sir. All right. New amount to follow. Linebacker for the Buffaloes. They're at Arizona State. Coming up next, brand new schedule out for CU Basketball. We'll talk to the head coach of the bus, Tad Boyle, next. show social media video very often here in the program but that was great Evan Batty after the football victory against Nebraska last week rushing the field with the red rest of the students nobody loves being a buff more than Evan Batty voice of the boss Mark Johnson back here Tad Bowler for the basketball team brand new schedule coming out for the Buffaloes it's a great looking slate and you and I were just talking uh, that that looks to me like the schedule of a team that's got experience and you expect a lot out of them. yeah there won't be a lot of uh easiness in the locker room for the games for the coach I can tell you that because there's a lot of quality teams on that schedule and and you and I uh, talked about it this isn't a schedule I would have done you know last year or two years ago but with with a veteran team and a lot of experience coming back and the way we finished the season last year it's a it's a challenging schedule and one that if we take care of business we don't have to win every game but we 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 win the majority of them you know, it's going to put us in a good position uh, for an NCAA tournament bid. Yeah, look uh, pretty good from a strength of schedule standpoint. We, we've talked about the, the right. unique game in China. And, and yes. by the way, have fun without me, by the yeah, way. That's it'll be tough. It. It's <laughs> going to be tough. I'll <laughs> find all the ice cream spots in China. <laughs> right, sounds good. Take it out Arizona State, but then San Diego, UC Irvine. you got that event coming up in Las Vegas, which I think is going to give you a great challenge. It is. Yeah, we played Wyoming in the first round and either Clemson or TCU in the second round, uh, both quality opponents and uh, on a neutral floor. So that'll be good. And then the you know, we all know how good Dayton was. Uh, anybody that was at that NIT game last oh, yeah. year, high level game. They've got all their guns back and added a few. Uh, we've got all our guns back and we added a couple. So uh, that's going to be a high level game in Chicago and, and get a chance for our our, uh, our fans in that area to come see the Buffs. You couldn't talk that big guy for Dayton to go to the NBA before you I was hoping. <laughs> I, was, I kept looking at that early entry list and I never saw his name pop up. So that's going to be a challenge. That, that's a player. great challenge right before you jump into conference play. That one's in Chicago, of course, right before the Christmas holiday. You've also got the trip to Colorado State. You've got Northern Iowa. And oh, by the way, the Buffs are going to be at Allen Fieldhouse this year. That's not a hard place to play. Okay. Is it? No, I, I think it think. is. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, that's going to be a challenge, yeah. uh, but it's, you know, look, our players love challenges and, and it's time for us to really uh, step it up. And uh, that's what we've done with our schedule. And now we got to step it up with our play. Yeah. The way this thing lays out, I'm wondering with, with the team and you, you talk so much with your players, do they seem excited by the challenge lays ahead of them? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny in the, in the spring and, and sometimes in the summer, you, you, you talk to, you see them in the hall, you see them in the weight room, say, Hey, what about this team? Are you excited about playing them? And they're, you know, going to Allen Fieldhouse, going to play at Colorado State, and then, you know, the other games we've talked about. Uh, our guys like to play against the best. They like to be challenged, and, and that's the kind of players you want in your program. And I would think from a conference standpoint, uh, the Pac-12s have been a lot of talk the last couple of years about strengthening this league. 
as you kind of just look into the crystal ball here, do you think this league has improved itself? I do. I do. I think we've recruited well. I think there's a lot of good players returning. Um, and, uh, you know, the any league, it doesn't matter what league you're in. I, I coached in the Big Sky before I got here, and that was a tough league when I was at Northern Colorado. Now Pac-12 is a tough league when you're at Colorado. And on a national uh, scale, we have to win games in November and December as a league. To, uh, to tell people how good we are. You've got a new player on this team, uh, Keyshawn Bartholomew. Tell us yes. about him. Well, he comes from Montreal, Canada. He's a kid that we saw last spring, and uh, he was a little unsure whether he was going to uh, come out this year or go to a year of prep school. He had the choice of being in a, classified in the 2019 class um, or the 2020 class, and, and we recruited him hard you know, for the 2020 class. And then you know, when we had a scholarship available still here late, he called us late in the process and said, hey, what about coming uh, to Colorado in redshirt and having a chance to practice every day and, and getting with Steve Englehart and, and improving my body and my game, going against McKinley right in practice every day. We said, you know what? It's a good idea. Yeah. Why don't you come now? So uh, my credit credit goes to you know the uh, our compliance department um, and everybody on campus who really uh, made that happen in a very short period of time. The most unusual recruiting uh I think a story that I've been a part of since I've been at Colorado. And you mentioned uh, Steve Engelhardt and that strength staff. The Buffs on social media put out a photo the other day. You've got some Mr. Olympia contestants. Those guys have transformed themselves this offseason. Yeah, he does a great job. Man, and, oh man. Uh, I hope those weren't photoshopped or anything like that, the abs. Uh, um, and, uh, I know they weren't my abs. Just, just for you and me, they <laughs> yeah, photoshopped exactly them. Yeah. Right, so. But no, uh, Coach Engelhardt does a great job. And our guys really respond to him and the passion and the energy he brings to the, to the weight room every day. So again, it looks good. You you know, on yeah. social media or on a picture, but we got to be able to put that uh, that uh, ball in the basket this year and stop other people from doing it. And I would think uh, right now you got as much excitement I would think for this team as maybe any you've ever coached. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and uh, but we we can't put the cart in front of the horse. We can't listen to the noise. It's all noise. We just got to focus on the day to day, f uh, you know, process of getting better. I know it's cliche, but. Uh, uh, it's important for us to do that. It'll be here before you know it. It will. Yeah. Let's enjoy some more football victories between like now that. and then. Yeah, sounds good. That's head coach Tad Bull. He and the Buffaloes get that season under, underway, like we said, come early November. Coming up next, Jesse Mahoney and the Colorado Buffaloes volleyball team had a back-to-back -back versus the CSU Rams last week. We're going to talk volleyball next. Back in the Buffalo Stampede, we come to you from the, uh, what would you call this, the lobby, I guess, right in front of the elevators on one side. you got the IPF behind us, the team store, which is always great to stop by on game day. I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Jill Schneckenberger joining us here for a couple of minutes yeah. from the volleyball team. You guys are coming up. Here you are, 5-0, yes. and you have the back-to-back -back with Colorado State. Yeah. You end up getting swept up there at Moby, and then come back in a very tough five-set mm -hmm. match against them here at, at the uh, Sioux Event Center. Go back to the one at Moby, though. Here you are, 5-0, and, and get swept up there. Kind of take us through that match. Well, as we started that match, it was very um, stressful. Mm -hmm. um, the whole stadium was packed. We've never kind of experienced that before. It got pretty and rowdy, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was every single time we served, they try to make, like, they have this noise level, like, to test the <laughs> yeah. levels. Kind of a meter? Yeah, yes. and yeah. so they, like, made it go all the way up. And it was just, like, it was a little stressful, but now we know how to play in that situation, and I think we can bounce back from the that's a new experience, though, for a yeah. freshman. She's a freshman from Irvine, <laughs> California, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, you play high school ball. You generally don't experience that kind of atmosphere. That's a new experience for no, you. Oh, yeah, it's completely new. Um, I've never seen anything like that. The only time I've seen it was, like, watching, like, the NCAA championships <laughs> when, like, the whole stadium's packed. But that was pretty interesting yeah. for the first, like, top ten matches that I've been in. Raucous atmosphere up in Mobile. Yeah. You kind of expect that. Okay, then you come home on Friday. Mm -hmm. you, you want to bounce back. Ended up being a heck of a match against the Rams that time, didn't Yeah. You? It was a really good match. Um, I think, so our coach, Jesse, was like, we got to rebounce from this. And even though we lost, I think we really did rebounce and kind of, like, figured out how play like we played against Illinois or how we played yeah. against the Big Ten Challenge and so I think that was like a really important match. You know the Illinois match you talked about that was a top five matchup for yeah. the Buffaloes as they uh, took down the Illini in the uh, Pac-12 Big Ten uh, Challenge. That was an interesting kind of event. You played some very high level competition that didn't yeah, you? Yeah that was I was stressed because I, <laughs> I remember watching them last year and I was very impressed with their outside because their outside is one of the top of the nations and being able to play against a top five team like 
that was a great opportunity. You know, one thing that the uh, volleyball team has done with Team Impact is adopt a youngster. And, and we had a chance to maybe tell that story. What an impact this team is making on the youthful community. awesome day. It was our first opportunity to meet um, Chloe and her parents and it's been so exciting. Um, we had like a mock signing day for her and it was just so much fun. We're so, um, so excited to welcome her to our Buff family and we're really grateful for this opportunity. Uh, I think it's extraordinary. I think she is just having a blast it's just to see how people accept her and, and everything and just teach her to, you know, everybody, every age, everybody can get along. Uh, it's been a really good experience. I mean, just play, talk, everything has been extraordinary. So we got Chloe to uh, kind of go through an official signing day like we would any of our other Colorado volleyball commits. So she uh, signed her name on the dotted line. Jesse signed next to her, mom, dad signed. Um, so that was a cool kind of way to make it official. So we're really excited to have you and your family become a part of the buff volleyball team. Chloe started out really shy, but uh, with the 18 new family members that she just got with our CU Buff players, uh, she had no choice but to come out of her shell a little bit, and now they cannot stop hanging out and playing around with volleyballs. And so it was just a really cool experience, and we're really excited to have her be a part of our team for the next two years. We told her just something big was going to happen today. She kept asking, is it, well, is it is, you know, as big as the house? So it's a little bigger than a house, I think. What a great story that is. Chloe is a young girl's name. Tell me about that whole yeah. deal. That's kind of neat. Um, well, we kind of met Chloe the first day she was brought in. We kind of opened her with big arms. The whole family came, and Chloe just kind of like joins us during our practices sometimes, <laughs> goes to all of our games. It's just kind of great to see her and bring a big smile to her face. Yeah, she's kind of got yeah. like, like 15 or 20 big sisters all of a sudden. No, yeah. <laughs> it's... I, she's, she was a little shy at first, but I'm glad she's like kind of opening up to us. And I think we're getting ice cream tomorrow night. So oh, there you go. Be fun. Life is good to be <laughs> yes. a volleyball player at CU. Hey, tell us how you became a Buffalo. You're from Irvine, California. Yes. Originally, I was committed to LMU, and I knew that wasn't a fit. Um, I knew I wanted to get out of state uh -huh. after that whole decision. And Colorado was always high up on my list. And I was like, Okay, like I know I really want to go to Colorado, but I got to keep my options open. And <laughs> just the whole environment here, like it's not a hard transition from California. It's actually really easy. Um, and it's the, beautiful on top of it. No, uh, yeah, huh? it's it's amazing here. Yeah. Why and wouldn't then, you want to be a buff? I don't know why anyone would want to <laughs> wouldn't want to be a buff. All right, this weekend, well, we're glad you're here, by the way. Thank this you. weekend, and by the way, she's got a, a sister that's a Division One college volleyball player playing for Campbell University. Yeah. And they're coming to town because the Buffs have got the Colorado Classic. You've got Oakland on Friday night. Yes. On the other side, then, is Campbell and I'm drawing a blank on that. I think it was Maryland. Maryland, that's yes. actually correct. So you get a chance to compete against your sister. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I'm really excited. Um, last time I played with my sister, I competed against her, was in club volleyball when I was 15 years old and she was 18. Okay. So I'm really excited to actually get the family together and actually watch volleyball instead of just, oh, I watch my sister one weekend and then she watches me one right. weekend. So I think it's going to be a really good opportunity to play against All her. All right. Well, good luck to the entire Thank team you. this weekend. Thank you. All right. Jill Snegenberger joining us, the freshman for the Colorado Buffaloes, as they host the Colorado Classic this weekend. That puts a wrap at the Buffalo Stampede. I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next week.